All right, I am Anthony Grana, the team lead for the Oregon State Robotics Club Mars Rover team, and I'm going to be giving a solder demonstration on SMD soldering techniques. Uh, today we'll be assembling this board. It's the main communications board on the rover called IRIS. Uh, it is almost completely SMD components except for a couple of connectors and a seven segment display. Uh, the tools I have available are wire cutters. It's often good to have a pair of pliers too. I have two uh, microscopic tweezers. I have the parts that I'm going to need. I have a soldering iron and a reflow gun. I will be using two microscopes, a optical one and a digital one. The digital one is for recording video for you. And then I have my parts list pulled up on my laptop here. As well as that, I have solder braid, a wire brush for cleaning my soldering iron, and different sizes of solder. So with that, let's get into it. Okay, so there are a couple of different components that we're going to learn to solder for this board. And I like to solder my boards in a particular order. So the first components that I solder are always uh, QFN components or components that only have pads on their bottom. They do not have legs or solder points on the side. Let me give an example of a QFN component here. So this right here is a 16 megahertz crystal timer. It is a metal package, small and rectangular, with no pads on the side or legs. There are, however, four golden contacts underneath the component. So this cannot be soldered with a soldering iron because as you put it on the board, I can flip it over, there's no way to get at it with a soldering iron. The reason why I like to do these components first and all QFN components is because the heat gun that you use to solder these will often desolder other components if they are present. So it's best to do these first and get all of your heat gunning out of the way in the beginning so that way you don't have to uh, deal with that in the future. This particular component goes right here and it is in the right orientation. Because of the glare, let's see if I can fiddle with my light a little bit. Oh, where's the component? Where did I, I lost it. That's the thing about working with tiny components. I honestly don't know where it disappeared to. That's okay, I have a second one. Actually, that is a 12 megahertz crystal timer. That is not a 16 megahertz crystal timer. So, uh, to deal with these components, what I like to do, the QFN components are the hardest components to solder. Ones with four pads on the bottom like this are usually not too much of a problem. Uh, it is ones that have 13 pads or 60 pads on the bottom that become extremely difficult to do by hand. And ones that go above that are pretty much impossible to do by hand. So how I like to start these QFN components is just to put a little solder on the pads ahead of time. Something that can melt and hold the component to the pad when we reflow it. Reflowing is a term for using a heat gun to do your soldering. So we will be reflowing this component. Now, I put quite a bit of solder on here. And if I were to put the component on now, it would be floating on top of the solder. It would not be held flush to the rest of the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some solder wick here. And I am going to remove a majority, but not all, of the solder I have put on to these pads. So with soldering, slow and steady is definitely the way to go. Um, and then let me show you a trick for uh, sucking solder with wick. 
once you it takes a while for the wick to heat up but you can make it heat up faster if you give it something to conduct the heat a little better like a little bit of solder and my soldering iron is actually kind of cool for doing uh there that is a better amount now because i'm dealing with such tiny amounts of solder you don't really get to see the uh solder wick working like you would on a larger component. It definitely heated up, but it's still full of solder. I'm also going to turn my soldering iron up a little bit, up to uh, 350 degrees Celsius. One thing that new uh, people or people new to soldering will do is they will turn their soldering iron up to around 400 degrees Celsius or something crazy like that. Three, it, you'd never need to leave the 300s unless you are doing some massive uh, wire soldering. 300 degree, the solder melts at around 260 degrees. It will melt on contact with anything at about 300 degrees. When you're dealing with tiny little components like this, you definitely want to keep your solder cool to avoid burning off the flux that is inside of the solder. Flux is your best friend when you are doing SMD soldering like this. There, these are, these three are good. And this one, it's still a little bubbly. See if we can get it. Almost. There we are. There, that's perfect. So I just have a tiny bubble of solder on each of the pads. The prep for reflow is really the most important part. If you get reflow wrong, it is a huge headache. So taking your time with prep really is advantageous for a component like this. So now I'm going to get my fresh crystal timer. This component is X1, which I have here. And I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees to the correct orientation. I'm going to check my camera feed and make sure you can see the dot. Ah, oh, you cannot. I'm going to see if I fiddle with the lighting. See right there, you can see how the component is denoted with a dot on pin 1, this top right pin over here. And on the board, I also have denoted a dot to denote pin 1. So these dots have to line up. For crystal timers, usually it doesn't matter if you put them backwards, but sometimes it does. On this one in particular, I don't think it matters. Um, but it's always good to follow good soldering conventions, especially if you're going to be showing uh, your board off to professionals in industry. Um, you don't want anything looking bad. So what I'm going to do here is I'm starting up my reflow gun uh, to 330 degrees Celsius on the lowest air setting. I want this to very gently blow hot air onto the component. So I'm going to use my 45 degree bent tweezers to hold this in place while I blast it with some hot air. And you want to hit the component and the pads. The reason for this is because if you just hit the pads and then put the component on top, the component is cold and it will instantly freeze the solder when it comes into contact and you'll wind up with a cold joint, which is bad. Those are bad for electrical conductivity as well as bad for uh, rigidity. They tend to be brittle and shatter. Now, we're definitely not at the point yet where the solder is melting. Reflow takes a bit of time. And if I were to do this with R10, C6, some of these other passive components around here, 
I would be melting the solder on them. Oh, the solder is melted. I would be melting the solder on those components and then blowing them away. All right, so now I have the solder melted and I'm going to center the component. Make sure it is pressed down. And you can tell it's pressed down because if I touch the component very gently, all of the bubbles of solder around move. Now I'm going to gently remove the reflow gun and allow the board and the solder to cool. My reflow gun was around 380 degrees Celsius by the end of that. I'm going to turn that off. When you turn a reflow gun off, it tends to uh, rev up like that. That's because it's pushing, it's cooling itself down. It's running cold air through the system to cool it down. By now, the component is soldered into place and I can't remove it. It isn't perfectly square, but I think it's good enough. Uh, you definitely can't tell with the human eye. You can only really tell with a microscope that it's not perfectly square. Um, and yeah, uh, let me see if I have any other QFN components on this board. I think I have one somewhere. Uh, I have one that's arguably QFN. You can get at it with a soldering iron. Oh, I do. Right here, X2. This is a 16 megahertz. The one we just did was a 12 megahertz crystal timer. X2, I'm actually going to need to get a different box because we keep all of our 16 megahertz crystal timers in a different box. Um, so I will be right back uh, with the correct component. All right, I am back. Uh, I have here the 16 megahertz crystal timer for X2. This one, it does not matter what orientation you put the component in. In fact, so much so that they don't even denote this component with a dot. It is just lettering. The reason why that is, is because crystal timers do not have polarity. They can be, uh, they're actually usually a two pin component. Uh, this one ha utilizes this pin here and this pin here. These other two pads are supposed to be connected to ground. Um, so as you can see, if I rotate them, rotate this component 180 degrees, I still have these two pins connected to the timer and these two pins connected to ground. So we're going to follow the same process and load up the pads with a tiny amount of solder. This is the same process that I would do for all QFN components, regardless of how many pins they have. Now I'm going to go ahead and just move the component out of the way with my solder. See if I can get a bend of my solder so I can get at it with a good angle. And now my soldering iron is a little bit warmer, which is good. I'll get a little bit better control here. So here I have enough control because I'm at about 320 degrees Celsius that I can really control how much solder winds up on the pads. Now, I get my tweezers, I can actually feel how big these bubbles are. This one's a bit big. And this one is borderline. So I'm going to uh, solder with these two on the left. These two on the right are fine. So here I've got my wick. Always keep your components as readily accessible as you can. And then again, one of the tricks with solder wick is that it conducts heat slowly. So if you feed it just a little bit of solder, like that, it will conduct heat much more efficiently. And there we go. Now we have that one done. On to the second. Now some people really dig the soldering iron into the pad when they're doing solder wick. 
Do not do this for surface mount components. In fact, don't do it at all. You can, it's very, very easy to damage your board with too much heat or too much pressure. So I know some people that will really take their soldering tip and just jab it into the board. Um, but there are ways around it if you have patience and you know what you're doing. So now this is all set up. I'm going to put move the component just off to the side where I can easily grab it and begin to heat up my reflow gun. Reflow guns in general are good for more than just QFN components like this. They're good for all kinds of rework uh, for surface mount soldering. For example, this, pad, this component here, U13, which I believe is a RS485 transceiver. Um, yes, it is. This component here uh, if I wanted to, re if I soldered it on backwards and wanted to remove it, I cannot heat up all these pads simultaneously with a soldering iron and remove the component. What I have to do is I have to heat up all the pads simultaneously, and that is easiest done with a reflow gun or a reflow oven. Now in industry, what they actually do, they don't have hordes of people soldering uh, PCBs like this by hand. What they do is they have a stencil, made, usually made out of aluminum, uh, with cutouts. A cutout for every single pad that is exactly the right shape and position. And they will lay the stencil over the board so that only the pads of the board are exposed. And what they do, this right back right pad over here has not fully melted. At least it is not in contact. There we go. Now I've got it. Remove the soldering iron. That's pretty square. I'm happy with that. Uh, mm. and then what they do is they will take solder paste, which is just microscopic balls of solder in a flux goop, and they will spread the solder paste all over the stencil and scrape it clean. And then when they remove the stencil, what they're left with is little bits of solder paste on every single pad on your PCB. And the stencil kind of, or the, the paste is kind of sticky. So what they'll do is they'll have a machine that will grab components off of reels and place them onto the sticky solder paste on the board. And they'll stick by their pads and pins. And then they'll put the whole board with all of the components and the paste into an oven. And the oven will melt the solder and the components will stick to the board. So these QFN components that only have pads on the bottom are ideal for that situation because they're extremely small, low profile, they have a very small footprint uh, because they don't have any legs, and uh, you can utilize pads on the bottom with that solder paste that you can't utilize if you're making components by hand.